So in this section, we're going to share what I hope will, let me, um, I feel like I need to stand for this because I want to really <laughs> transmit an energy here. These five statements would change your life. A lot of times we hear them like insights, like, ooh, that resonates, but then we don't hold ourselves accountable to them. We don't live it. So we've asked some of our leaders to come talk about how these have made a difference for them in their own world, in their own business. So we'll speak to them overall for a moment, and then we'll go into a little more depth and we'll bring on some of our panelists who can talk about how this has really made a difference in their life. My energy creates my reality. So we say we're an energy first company and we train other energy first companies. So what that means for me is when I'm talking with someone who's a potential client or I'm giving a talk or whatever it might be, or someone's asked me to come speak to their group. I'm starting with the energy. What's the energy of this opportunity? What's my energy? How, how do I want to show up to impact the space I'm stepping into mm -hmm. with intention? When I'm talking to a potential client, I'm looking at, is their energy aligned or not? Like, do they, cause that's going to be who I can serve the most, right? Can I, can we shift your field into alignment with your goal so that you can move toward it more effortlessly rather than struggling so much. Mm -hmm. What do you hear? Um, I think this is also taking a sense of responsibility for my energy creates my realities, right? Mm -hmm. So the energy with which we enter a space and that we bring to a space. Um, also being able to hold the things that are showing up in our life inside of this context, which is to say that this thing is presenting itself because in some way, somehow it's a match for what's happening over here vibrationally or energetically mm -hmm. and without judgment or shame, but just as information, which gives us access to something that we wouldn't have access to if it was like, oh, why is this happening to me? Right? So inside my energy creates my reality. We have an understanding of the transform of the anatomy and how transformation works. And part of that too, is like, we can locate ourselves at any given moment in terms of where we are in the anatomy. Right. So we might, we might be able to recognize, Ooh, I'm like, I'm really in a commitment phase myself right now. I'm grappling with a discomfort. I'm the results I'm getting aren't what I really want to be getting. So, it, and I know that that's a result of my energy. And so I'm, I'm reckoning with my own commitment to that next shift, which it feels like it leads right to number two, I lead transformationally. And there's a couple aspects to this, but the main thing is mm -hmm. as a leader, when things are showing up, I don't go, oh no, there's no clients or, oh, that didn't work. Oh, I, I got two signups or mm -hmm. whatever. I mean, we might say that first, but then we say, okay, like you just said, where am I in the anatomy and what am I doing with this result? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I know that's not the end of the road. Yeah. I, I think in this one too, I also hear, I lead transformationally means I'm not waiting to arrive somewhere before I start to lead, but that I, I know that my humanity comes along with me, right? I don't have to be perfect to make a difference that I can share my own experience and let you see various aspects of me as I lead. I call it transforming out loud. Exactly. If I'm willing to transform out loud, I'm willing to move through that momentary embarrassment that says, oh, whoops. And I'm willing to share about it. That's powerful. How many of you have leaned into someone's marketing message because it was transparent and you felt the authenticity of it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I practice healthy compassion. Mm -hmm. This is like, we are all giving people here sometimes to a fault. Last year, our, you know, our breakout was all about that. And healthy compassion is I set boundaries. I know what works for me to be in my magic. And mm -hmm. then I give from a full cup. Mm -hmm. I trust other people are whole and complete. I let go of the need to fix the world. Mm -hmm. How many of you want to fix the world at some level? <laughs> we see, uh -huh. I mean, the people that come into our world are so wonderfully like heart centered and they, they want to contribute. And this really can be a thing, right? That's when it comes to raising their prices so that they can sustain their life, right? And they don't want to leave people behind. They don't want to be exclusive or whatever that looks like. It's like having having those boundaries, even for your, 
starting with yourself, right? Like honoring what you need and then knowing that people are big enough to handle themselves. Right. Like, let's say your vibration magic. I saw a lot of those and you have your vibrational space, right? Your source field. Yes. We have a retreat for our leaders called the source field, but you have your source field around you and you see someone and you're like, I could really serve them. And you want them to come into your source field and like, feel that experience. Yeah. Ashley, Ashley's goes like this. They're having some kind of issue going on. Right. And you go, Oh, let me help you. Right. And now your source fields over there and you're over here and now you're both going down. And so healthy compassion is I feel with you. I love you. I see you. I be with you and mm. come on over here when you're ready, when you're ready. Yeah. I'm Gosh, I feel like um, if you've if you've ever experienced what feels like wanting it more than your client or try, like outworking mm. them somehow, anybody mm. type out working, yeah, type out working okay. in the chat if that's ever been you. Okay. Yeah, this is the antidote for that. Yeah, one. that's health, healthy compassion is okay. You know, I'm here. I'm ready. I'm willing. I love you. It's okay. Choose this or choose this. <laughs> right? Yeah, and I'm clear. My desire is supported by the universe. So this is fundamentally believing that our desire is given by source. And that if we have a, a genuine like soul desire for something, then the way to fulfill that desire is already present and available to us. Like that is the law and that's how it works. So we can, tr we can allow ourselves to want what we want and trust what we want when it's given by source. And sometimes we have issues with source, right? We think source let us down. We don't trust, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? It bother issues. Mm -hmm. um, and we think, oh, like maybe I won't be supported in the thing I really love. But yet how many of you deep down know the universe is abundant? Like, you know that you know that you know. All the expansion magicians should be raising their hand. Mm -hmm. And by the way, if you're not an expansion magician, hire an expansion magician, right? Get in the space. Mm -hmm. The knowing that the universe is abundant is something I was not trained in. This was not natural for me. I was not brought up in that. No, we, it was very like, much scarce. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. I mean, for real, you know, mm -hmm. was like... Yeah. We were on food stamps. <laughs> we were getting the best deal. I was helping my mom cut coupons. That was how we connected. Mm -hmm. And yet when I heard one of my mentors early on talk about where the desire is present, the way is present, because in nature, like nature doesn't think about growing and feel bad or like it's all available where the desire is present, the way is present. When I heard it, it was one of those like, oh, Mm -hmm. That feels so true, but I have so much evidence that it's not true, but it feels really true, but the world would say that's not true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so you could start in baby steps. My desire is supported by the universe. If this thing that I really want was actually available to me now, what's one step I would take? Mm -hmm. And the belief in that over and over and over and over again. And so many people, you know, we'll talk to some of our leaders about how they've seen this show up, but so many people try to hold a belief in abundance alone, mm. <laughs> you know, and it, does anybody else feel like you need those reminders? Yeah. But like, but yeah, but if the universe was really abundant, then what, then what? Like, well, I think what you're pointing to is really great because we're, you know, these are paradigms, right? So it's like a space in which we're operating. And it's one thing to have a belief. My desire is supported by the universe. And it's another thing to live or operate mm -hmm. as if that were true. So a lot of us cognitively go, yeah, that's right. That's true. And it feels good to believe it, but we don't actually move through the world like it's true. And we that's not throw our hat over the wall, right? The universe is abundant. But uh, when that, you know, shows up for me, then I'll act like that or yeah. some version of that. And it's like, <laughs> I've never known it but, to work like that. <laughs> yeah. I trust and make, create space for my magic, you know, and this is like our, our passion here, potent containers that create space for magic. We need to literally create space and our world trains us be busy, 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 doing, mm -hmm. doing, figuring out. Catherine's got the PhD in figuring out <laughs> and we, you know, and then we get the like, okay, I figured it out. I figured it out. But that's not the same as space for your magic.
-hmm. And then we think that our magic, like, oh, I should be able to see all the signs right now, but I never sit still long enough to actually Mm -hmm. ask Mm -hmm. or devote the time and attention to becoming intimately familiar with it. So I would say that that's a big part of it too, because for a lot of us, your, your magic is very likely showing up in all kinds of ways that you don't even recognize yet. It's so the water you swim in you're doing it so naturally in some instances that you are taking it for granted or not seeing where it's at work. So there's Mm -hmm. getting really familiar with that, like magic as magic and being able to see it and validate it and value it for what it is. And that takes like a a devote. I want to just say a devotion to that. And that falls in this place. Mm -hmm. I, I trust and create space for magic and have people reflect it back to you because yes. when it is the water you swim in, you know, I mean, I'll just be really clear. Like I've been working with expression magic. We call it Oracle. Yes. And so I've told my whole team like, oh, this Oracle thing is just here. And I don't know even what it means for me to be Oracle. I've always been, you know, the trainer or the compassion, you know, we're going to like move the energy, but like Oracle feels different. And what do I do? And they go, okay. So they put on the agenda Oracle. Team meeting, team meeting agenda, team meeting agenda. There's an Oracle (laughs) section and it's just like, whatever you want to say, let it come through. You know, they'll say, what's, what's Oracle say about this? And I'm like, oh wait, that's me. Yes. (laughs) But having people who actually are seeing it and reflecting the value back is imperative. So are you starting to see some places where you're solid and some places where maybe you want some practice or some reminders, some of each? Yeah. Anybody? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I'd love to, I'm going to introduce you to some people. And when I say your name, put your Zoom hand up. I'd love to introduce you to Sandra Goldman. Sandra is our, one of our writing coach extraordinaires. They said they go way back. I saw it in the chat. Oh, Great. Oh, nice. Yeah. So you've probably seen her body of work (laughs) evolve here as she's been in her own expression, magic Mm -hmm. and recognition. Sarah Buckley. Sarah has been helping people to really expand their careers and through movement, moving their bodies. Mm -hmm. She's like a whiz at the business stuff. And so, you know, as she's been growing more and more entrepreneurs are coming into her space, helping move their results with their business. Wendy Lee. Wendy is the founder of Lead Her Ship Revolution um, in Houston, Texas. She helps women really own their truth and speak up and be seen and heard. Mm -hmm. And Elizabeth Hill. Elizabeth is also a writing coach and book publisher. She helps people find the heart of their story and actually get it out into the world. Mm -hmm. And Annette Stahl, Mm -hmm. Annette takes this transformational work and helps you create space in your home for manifesting everything that you desire. Mm -hmm. Yay. Okay. There you all are as a panel. So we'll start here. My energy creates my reality. And just want to hear from you, like, where is this showing, where has this shown up in your life? Or maybe even where have you taken ground in your ability to really operate from this paradigm? And you can just. Yeah. And we'll popcorn. Like like as if we're all sitting on the couch talking about how great it is. Yeah. Grab your tea (laughs) in the living room. Wendy? <laughs> yeah, this one, I was like, oh, I put some asterisks and circles around this one. Okay. <laughs> it's so interesting because I just think about my journey, even being a part of the leadership program that you guys have and the kind of leader I was in the corporate world and then making the transition into the leader that I am today is so different, mm-hmm. especially this last year. I've really been following the energy, right? Like when you guys were talking about the the match or the not match. And sometimes it feels like a match and then it's not. And that's okay. But the only way you know sometimes is to lean in a little bit. And, you know, I kind of peek in the door. Is that mine? Oh, no, that's not mine. I go to the next door. 
I just want you to ground, you mentioned um, coming in from corporate right. and your role in corporate. Can you just give people a background on your, your corporate job and yes. what brought you here? Yes, absolutely. So I was in the corporate world for 25 years with my last position being a senior VP in HR. And it was a perfect role for who I was at the time because I could take the handbook, follow the rules, and do what everybody told me to do. I could just turn into a chameleon and get recognized for that and take all of my energy and give it away to everybody else. Because my pattern was being the victim of my circumstances, growing up the way that I did and not being in safety and literally being a victim. It was like, how can I smooth the water so that everybody else is taken care mm -hmm. of but don't know how to do that for myself. And I actually went on my first retreat. It wasn't Darla's retreat, but I met Darla. And it was the first time that it kind of opened my eyes to, wait a second, I don't, this isn't, this really is not my reality. This is a personality that's been developed mm. to survive. <laughs> but deep down inside, it's really not me. I want to be expressive in different ways. And it was kind of weird. I could hide behind the HR thing and be like, oh, can't do that. Can't say that. Can't be this because you can't do oh, that. Oh, that's so good. HR. Yeah. Right. Can't do that when you're in HR, except for when I came back from this retreat, I was different. So I started doing that and leaning in, even though you're not supposed to, which is, ooh, that was totally <laughs> against my brain. Because I was the good girl. Let's do this uh, the big way. You know, eventually I connected with Darla to go to one of her retreats that um, happened to be the Liz Gilbert one. <laughs> so that worked out good for me. <laughs> but it was like, uh, I think for me, it was, it was being in an environment that I could be seen, heard, and validated exactly how I was. I didn't have to perform. I didn't have to prove. I didn't have to put on this show. Mm -hmm. It was a little hard to receive in the beginning because mm -hmm. I had been used to doing this all of my life. And little by little, you know, you got to practice. It's not a one and done, everybody. It is not a one and done. <laughs> you got to practice. And, and you, you know, I tell people, you want to really know yourself, be in a situation like an entrepreneur where that, you know, I couldn't hide behind a title. Right. And the right. truth is that title wasn't me anyway. It was parts of me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, Ashley, you reminded me very well recently because I used to say it was because I worked so hard and I was in the hustle and I was the first one in and the first one out. That's what made me successful. Mm -hmm. I was in that masculine energy. That was only partly true. What was truth? What was the truth is that I was a love bug and I was mm -hmm. a compassionate person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I knew how to build relationships and I wanted people to feel included. That's what made me a really good leader, yeah. mm -hmm. not only in the corporate world, but then when I started transitioning into what I do now, the part that I needed some love and compassion was, and I deserve that too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think about hmm. um, a couple things pop one. So I, I was neighbors with Wendy at this retreat. We had our little casitas or whatever. And, and um, I loved getting to meet Wendy. I, you know, she thinks she was like some, you know, tough, mean person, but I could <laughs> see her love, but she was wearing like an army. I remember you in this army hat and the army vest and like the green and like the, you were, you were, you did have like this very serious look on your face. <laughs> And then you went back to corporate and started wearing pink and oh, pink and pink. And you know, yeah. you're not wearing pink at the moment, but yeah. Um, so my but energy creates reality. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, like how that started to actually change your reality. Cause I had the honor of being your, your personal coach as you were transitioning out of corporate. Mm -hmm. And so there's good, there's, there's the, I don't even want to say good and bad, but there's the aligned parts that brought you in. And then there's the black lines that brought you into that role. Mm -hmm. And so we can leave and go, that was bad. Right. right? And then we're going to go over here and recreate it again. 
And the most brilliant thing that Wendy did is she said, I'm going to practice being the new me here before I quit. And so she started wearing pink and dresses and like sharing her heart and like pulling people aside and saying, hey, I know you said this is what's happening, but I think this is what's happening. And am I right? And like people start crying in her office and spontaneous healings in the HR office yes. because you you shifted your energy and the reality shifted, you know, and then ultimately it was like, oh, I want to create a business. I want to do this for my work, but it wasn't running away from something that wasn't working. It was actually, you owned your expression there. Yeah. I think that was the biggest gift. It's like so many times we have this thing. It's because of the environment, you know, the corporate world or yep, yep, the yep, relationship yep. or the whatever, but <laughs> Who feels we're, that? we're the common denominator, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So that's mm -hmm. the good and the bad. That means we have to take responsibility, but the good thing is we get to take responsibility. Mm-hmm. So but, really leaning into so that. That's my, my energy creates my reality and that sourced leader. Yes. Right, is even if you're working in a corporate job, you're the kind of person that's willing to speak truth and bring an energy that mm -hmm. shifts a reality for you and for others. That That's what it is to show up and be a demonstration of that. Yeah. You know, so, I'll, I'll, I'll close with this one line. When I was doing my exit interview with my boss and, you know, you kind of getting a little bit of feedback, like, you know, how was it, et cetera, et cetera. And I said, was there anything that you thought that I could have done differently or whatever? And he said, sometimes you kind of would bring your heart a little bit in and not be as, you know, practical with things. And in that moment, I knew that I did exactly what I was called to do. Oh, I was like, yeah, <laughs> you're freaking right. That's what I did. <laughs> yeah. Are you saying that's a problem? <laughs> well, exactly. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and confirmation. Okay. It's time to go. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then it was just like, I wanted to really, you know, I'm an expression magician. <laughs> I wanted to really with that knowledge and with that uh, transformation express fully like mm -hmm. completely mm -hmm. express myself fully in in all areas and mm -hmm. and that's really why i left and and then to be in front of an audience where i didn't have a rule book and i could just do the rules even though i already started doing that in hr <laughs> yeah. Anybody else feel like this one's particularly a lot? Let's just maybe hear from one more person here. I'll just be quick. Something popped for me uh, around this issue, which is, you know, your energy creates your reality and in, in all the beautiful ways when you're in high vibration and you're able to bring those people in at that, you know, who are attracted that, to that vibration. But you know, I also thought of like, oh, there's also the shadow side of this, which is sometimes you attract someone into your container who's reflecting back your default energy. And it can be, um, it can be really a little scary at first or triggering, or I did something <laughs> wrong or I manifested wrong and all that. And one of the beautiful things that I learned from being at containers with Darla and Ashley is that this is an opportunity for us both to heal. Right. Mm -hmm. And that, um, you know, you said this before, we all get to level up, you know, when we're in our containers and um, get paid for it. So yeah. I just wanted to throw it in because it was something that, that's come up for me that was, you know, scary when it first happened, right? Like, here's this person mm -hmm. in my space. They're bringing this energy that I don't like, right? What is it? What did I do wrong? Yeah. You who know, would that, go there like, first? What did I do wrong that this is mm -hmm. showing up? Mm -hmm. But how powerful is it? That you can be with what's showing up, stay present, get curious, and actually have it be a catalyst for your next level of expansion. Beautiful. I feel like, and I think I've seen you, Sandra, go, oh, this cohort. Oh, I see how this cohort is resonating where I was when I started this cohort. Oh, look at this new cohort. And like, I can feel the vibration of this new cohort is a match for where I've been. And like, you've literally watched this happen and earn while you learn is one of the things mm -hmm. that we've said. And yeah, it's so cool that it's been so clear. Annette. Annette. <laughs> I just feel like for me, I just, I've designed and drafted over 400 homes and built them. And I told a lot of clients to leave because I was like, whatever energy you put in 
is what's going to happen in your build process. So we're together nine months for this house. And if you guys, if a couple comes in and they're not in agreement and they're trying to build a home to solve a problem mm -hmm. and not deal with a conversation, we can either have the conversation or you can find someone else to build it because you are just building that problem now in a physical state. <laughs> and after 400 homes, That's I have so, so much evidence. That's so brilliant. <laughs> It just, it just like something just clicked for me, how this is probably like, you're probably so deeply grounded in this because what you're building are phys like you're, you're, you're getting a very physical representation of what's happening. So yeah. Ooh. It was my third I'm house. In the house. To you building this problem. Yeah. <laughs> right. No, like the my third house, they hit rock and then they hit water. And I was like, they had a foundational issue. They needed a marriage counselor. And I finally <laughs> said, we're selling this land and you guys are going to a marriage counselor. I ended up building for their next spouses and both of them. But um, <laughs> they did. They, that was what I was like, this is yeah. and that, at that point, I started saying it's match.com. I don't know if I'm a match for you or if building's a match for you until we meet. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so at that point, I didn't know I was doing transformational, but I was kind of doing it in the yeah. back door by how I said yes or no. As I, I, I kind of want people to type how type home in the chat if you're a realtor, a decorator, designer, like if you are in that realm. Just curious. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead. Well, it's like a funny personal note. Like week before last or something, I text Annette. I'm like, my garage door will not effing close. Like I have, they, he's, the technicians have come out. They, they, I, it opens, but it won't close. And, and immediately she's like, it's your spirit guides. You need to take your paints out there. You set up a table, you make yourself comfortable. They're trying to talk to you. There's something happening, right? Like her, the energy creates the reality is Annette's world. So I say the garage door and she's like picking up what that, what that means, right? It was, and I built so many, yeah. And I built so many, but the, the ironic part was I could do that for someone else, but for myself, I kept building companies that people wanted. So I had built and sold five successful companies, well, six, um, and I hated all of them at the end because I was solving problems and being the fixer. And then I was like, okay, I got a system mm -hmm. now I'm bored. Mm -hmm. Where's my next problem, right? And then I met my first retreat, I met Ashley. It wasn't her retreat, but I met her and she was dancing oh, yeah. in the back. And I was like, what? Like you can move? <laughs> like, because people mm -hmm. would come and see my business card, then they would meet with me and they'd be like, you don't even look anything like your marketing. <laughs> when I was a realtor ah. and I was like I didn't know I didn't know that they could go together to tell this world so okay paradigm two I lead transformationally this is that like underlying belief transformation is possible mm -hmm. um being willing to transform out loud like really viewing the world through this transformational lens so who'd like to share on this one I can share so um when I first started going through uh, CSL, I really was aware that I was not, I knew that people would be having a transformation when they came in to write. I knew that when they were publishing their book that they would have this experience, but I did not put it on loudspeaker. It was kind of like, I. it was like kind of a sneak attack transformation. I knew it would you happen just at did some this. point. <laughs> <laughs> Who's ever done right. a sneak attack? Type <laughs> sneak, sneak attack in the chat. <laughs> right. And and so what what has been so helpful for me to learn is to design with the trans design my programs for people yeah. with with this in mind and to know that it will happen to prepare people for this experience. And it's helped me first of all attract people that want that that that's what they're here for because that's the most exciting. Thing for me, it's right. the most exciting um, part of my business and people that I want to work with and grow with. Yeah. So it's been really, really fun and helped me do the work and help me feel like I can own the magic and the, the value of the work that I do rather than, yes, we'll get a book together and you'll have a book to hold at the end. But it's what goes into that and what is possible through that process for the clients. And it's just, yeah we were kind of similar in that, like we're running business that were, but not necessarily built in line with the anatomy, right? So I know you adjusted your business model to be a transformational business model so that A, you could do more of the work, like be more upfront about the shifts that were going to happen, right? Because I remember Elizabeth and I talking about, everybody, people say they want to write a book. Anybody here want to write a book? People say, oh, they want to write a book. They have no idea 
really like what they're getting themselves into or what it's going to take to then put that book out in the world. Right. And then she's masterful at guiding people through that, but had kind of given away those pieces to other people and was busy doing a lot of the busy work. Mm, yeah, <laughs> right? like, yeah. I, I gave people. away all the fun stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. So you want to speak a little bit about how shifting your business model, you know, impacted your revenue, like, your revenue oh. and just je- in general, your experience, the enjoyment of your work. Yeah. So it, it has made it so that I had at, I had basically given away the writing coaching portion of some of the work that I do. And I was kept with the technical things that I, I don't mind doing, but it was, um, if that became all that I do, that's not, not as pleasurable for me. Um, and it's not my magic, right? My magic is being with people and holding space for them. And, Mm -hmm. and by recognizing that and building out the, I've been able to, do my abundant author mastermind that is a group program that stretches out for the year. We just kicked that off. I have a higher ticket program where it's one-on-one with me and going through the process in a really soulful, spiritual, mindful Mm -hmm. way. And it just feels so much better and easier and lighter, right? I first um, came into doing the work with, with Darla through the work lighter challenge. And it's, that is what it's made possible for my business so much easier. And I love like you have the find the heart of your message and like really instead of people thinking I want to write like we I think Carolyn spoke to this earlier right we can all agree like oh I want this outcome oh great let's let me give you this outcome okay we're going to stay up here in our headspace and pretend like we're just going to do this outcome and it's going to matter mm-hmm. without getting soulful about it mm-hmm. and you're going like like okay first step part of your message. And we're going to deal with what you're not dealing with about what it actually is going to mean to be a published author. And Mm -hmm. Elizabeth, I remember your story of you publishing your book and you having the book reading and like not telling the people in your life that you had this book reading because, (laughs) right. It's like, so what's the point if you have this book, but you're not telling anyone you have the book because you're, you know, still in default. So Mm -hmm. you help people be ready, not just to write it, but be seen in it. Yeah. And girls getting paid to do it. Yeah. And it's, I do (laughs) want to share that, um, a big change for me was that now I can look ahead six months and have the revenue that I need to live. Right. So entirely from my business, I can look ahead six months and go, Oh, I'll be fine. I have payments coming in. I can actually, before I would just be like, well, I hope in next week I get some money coming in. Like it was always kind of like a wish and a prayer. <laughs> it would always work out, but yep. now I can actually go, Oh, things are flowing and I can trust this. Um, which is very, much better for my nervous system. I'll just say that. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, because I also feel like you were like, when am I getting paid so I can pay all my people who are doing the right. fun work that I would love to be doing, but right. I'm instead doing admin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. You're amazing. <laughs> so good. And by the way, like, isn't it cute that her little human created this situation? That's what we say over here, not in a disparaging way. It's like, oh, look at my cute little human uh-huh. that gave away all the fun work and left me doing the hard stuff. Yeah, <laughs> totally. <laughs> yeah, so good. I practice healthy compassion. Yeah, anybody want to speak to this, where you've grown in this area or where this is alive for you? I'm like, I see Sandra going like this. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, tell us about it. You know, I run a six month program uh, where I bring people through both the a source experience and the integration. And, you know, going through the source experience is always, you know, it's, it's, it's a high, right? Because people shift their energy. They have this big opening. They start to write clearer. It's really fun. And it's really exciting. And, you know, Darla, you say something, um, I've heard you say something fre- frequently, which is, you know, a has or a dime a dozen, right? But how do we actually like bring this down into our lives and have it, um, have real change, have lasting change, you know, to, you know, we mm-hmm. know that to create a new neural pathway we have to keep doing the thing over and over and over and until you know the brain gets the idea and says oh yeah that's who we are and so mm-hmm. um in terms of healthy compassion i feel like i in the past probably well most certainly you know would be frustrated you know because i kept seeing people 
you know, and actually this is why I became a transformational leader because this would happen anyway, right? People going, wanting to go back to like the old, the old way of doing it. Okay. Well, like, but, but I like that default pattern. It's so comfortable. I think that for me, the healthy compassion and, and for seeing people be whole and complete, you know, was just to keep holding that space for them, mm-hmm. bringing them gently, back, reminding them and, you know, and just doing it kind of over and over and over without mm-hmm. judgment, you mm-hmm. know, without judgment. Mm-hmm. I think that's healthy compassion. I think that's what you're talking about. Yeah, I like totally. So good. I, it's so good because we can get irritated. And the reason we get irritated is because we think, did I do something wrong? Like, why are they not getting this? Right. And we're, we're judging ourselves and judging them. And it's, and it's like, wait, okay, they're whole and complete. This might take longer than my timeline. And that's okay. And it's, and and in some ways we're mirroring something for them and they're mirroring something for us. And if we can let that go, I'm guessing you probably have found yourself like when you find that place of compassion and trust in source that they're sourced, which I know you teach, um, right. they start writing or they start doing the thing. Or they're just mm-hmm. going to get there. They're just, gonna, they're just going to get, eventually they just get it and they're there. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And we can get really anxious. Like, are they going to get it? 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 <laughs> and it's well, like, it's and, they get it. and then not only do they, <laughs> they get it and then they get it like, like that. Quantum leap. Mm-hmm. Inch, 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 inch. Quantum leap. Inch, 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 inch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It takes a lot of compassion through this um, part. <laughs> I feel like I also want to name Sandra. You have been living in various Airbnbs over the last two years as I think a form of healthy compassion for yourself, giving mm-hmm. yourself the environment you want to work in. And oh, that's um, good. so just, uh, you know, if you want to transmit permission to people, if they need to move, if they yeah. need to... Uh- this happened for me because um, there's a house being built. It's taken two years right next door to mine. And we have massive construction right outside my studio. So it was pretty impossible for me to write, much less teach. And so I actually, I rented a place for one month just to get out. And I liked it so much. It felt so good to be in my own energy and in my own space and have a place of my own to write and teach. You know, I, I, I the money came in f- for it like pretty quickly that I had enough, <laughs> um, that I have, I've had enough actually on and off for the last two years to be able to take care of myself. Yeah. In this that is actually way. my last, yeah. So my la- I've been in this space on and off for a long time and I'm about to move out of it. Um, mm. because we're moving. Mm. Yes. Permission granted, whatever you need to take care of yourself. And that, that feels like a good to- segue into yes. my desire is supported by the universe, right? What a beautiful combo. So like, needing the space to be mm-hmm. doing delivering your work mm-hmm. not next to a construction zone and having that desire be supported by the universe in such a way that you're right. doing it and w- someone could just be mad that this is happening or you could go oh okay this is an invitation to a new desire i didn't know i had and then i think you kind of like it <laughs> come home see your hubby go away come yeah. back go away right <laughs> Okay, so my okay. desire is supported by the universe. Uh-huh. Yeah, this one's me. I was gonna <laughs> maybe like... touch on on the compassion one too, and mostly Fabulous. because I I work with a lot of really ambitious and like high achieving people that are in corporate that want to change careers, that want to change jobs, that want to step into entrepreneurship. Compassion is something that they struggle with. It's something that I struggled mm-hmm. with because when you're especially if I have an athletic background and when you grew up like playing sports Mm -hmm. and competing, it's like you have that drive, but the thing you struggle with is the compassion. So if you go off and like you do something into the unknown, you're not exactly sure how you're going to achieve. So for me, the universe supporting my desire is releasing control not knowing what's going to happen, but know that the desire is there and the way appears. So that happened to me. Like (laughs) once I stepped into it, it just kept happening. It happened in my business. It happened in my relationships. It happened in my living situation and it just keeps happening. And I got the change card Mm. for the events. (laughs) So I have some more desires looming. And I know, I know that 
the way it will appear. So for anyone that has like that, like control part, this is like your shift. This is your mm. shift. So, <laughs> oh, right. Right. Because yeah. what we what we know we can achieve within our own control is naturally going to be limited based on our past experience. Right. And you're saying, oh, if I just let go of control, actually more happens than I could have micromanaged. Yeah. Yeah. But it requires the, the trust in the universe to support your desire. Mm-hmm. I got so many chills when you said relationships. So <laughs> I did want to, you know, speak to that. Because I feel like, yeah, who here, who here would like a relationship? Like you're in the market for that. Woohoo! <laughs> and I okay. remember, Sarah, I remember you just like kind of casually mentioning like, yeah, I'd like yeah. that. Yeah. 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 I, so part of, I was saying this to Ashley, like when I signed up for my cohort, I knew that I wanted to be in a source leader. Like I already decided and just receiving support was a transformation and Mm -hmm. not having it be hard, not doing it alone, uh, just receiving support to go where I want to go. And that made me not just like more emotionally aware, but more emotionally available Receptive. to my clients. And I literally met the love of my life. I have attracted more clients in because you shift, you mm. shift yourself, you shift yourself and you become a space for your desire. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I'm hearing all the things. I'm back to my energy creates my reality. And yeah, like, like, yeah. You and, shift and something just... internally, and then the results mm-hmm. show up outside. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So expect magic about... everywhere. <laughs> I feel it too. You know, you had launched your program. You knew how to do a marketing launch and run a group program. Like you had been doing it. Yeah, and there was this like bringing in the magic piece. Mm-hmm. I feel like you went, okay, I'm going to wait until my magic knows. And there was a fight of like, oh, should I do another cohort now? I should hurry up and do another cohort now. Right. Or do I wait until my magic? And like, like that process of trusting, uh, like, how was that for you? Like, what would, what advice would you give to people? Does it, cause has anybody mm-hmm. been there? Like push through and do this or wait, I can make space for my magic. Has anyone been there? Yeah. So to go back to the first paradigm, like you go first, you lead transformationally, you decide that you're the type of leader that goes first. And then more and more you're able to, to trust it, like when to lean in, when to be in your more feminine and lean back, that connection to yourself and your intuition. It's a muscle that just keeps growing. And there we are. And I trust and create space. I mean, like you literally would be like, look at my chills. Like you did it out loud with us as we were all together. Um, Mm -hmm. And you had such a vibration and sensation. So by the time you were at the end, it was like, like you could almost see it on your face when you'd be like, yeah. Like you're Mm -hmm. like, I'm not doing a retreat. And then you're like, I'm doing a retreat. And here's what's happening. And it's all planned. (laughs) I mean, um, so at the uh, watching at the beginning to versus the end of being an incubation of this community, it was, mm-hmm. um, transformational. Then, you know, your relationship happened. And then like all of a sudden, when you were just like, I'm only going to follow what I feel like everything just mm-hmm. poosh, new apartment, yeah. new guy, new, like, <laughs> buckle up. <laughs> up. Yeah. Yeah. That's and it's right. a new way to live. It's a new way to live. Yeah. There's no turning I mean, back. I just got to say. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, that was June to August because in June, like we were walking and it was your first, like, you're like, wait a minute. Mm-hmm. My phone just dropped. I fell. Wait, that might be something, right? You went from yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> like, what? <laughs> the magic of being witness too, right? <laughs> totally, totally. Yeah. I trust and create space for my magic. Mm-hmm. Our final paradigm. Oh, and God. Sarah, by the way, Sarah, yeah, did say fi- say yes to the next launch in the form of a retreat that's happening this summer in Guatemala. Guatemala. So follow her, check that out. Yes. Sandra's got one coming up in April. Mm-hmm. We can, everybody's got 
stuff coming up. So in Sarah kind of spoke to that. I trust and create space for my magic with, I'm only going to follow what I, what I feel like, you know, that's the, that, that is your magic, right? That was my whole guidance for one whole, one season of my own was follow the feel good. It was really mm-hmm. sensation magic. I didn't have the words for that, but it was follow the feel good breadcrumbs. And my body would say yes. And I would go. And it was like that buckle up, right? Who would, who, who has had an experience of that where you've leaned into or taken ground and really trusting and creating from that space? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wendy. And then Annette. Yeah. Um, around. <laughs> by the way, I'm getting so much goodness from all everybody here. I love being mm-hmm. on this panel with y'all. This just happened when I did my hustle healthy retreat. So, you know, before being the doer and the prover, I would have to get everything planned and all these things. And once mm. I got the calling to do the retreat, which came from me going to a retreat at this retreat center, and I immediately said, oh, I'm going to host a retreat here. And then the second thing was, oh, I'm going to be doing business on this side of town, which is an hour and 15 minutes away from me, and leaning in and trusting And then growing some communities with that, which ended up being quite a few people that came to the retreat. But what was different is I just kept one thing that I did um, adopt from Darla is the big ass whiteboard. So got my big big sticky. I'm jonesing (laughs) for it. (laughs) I'm looking at it right now. And I just started getting hits and I would just plop Mm. things on it. Right. And meanwhile, the people that are doing the retreat, do you have this? Do you have this? Do you have this? I said, it's coming through, but I don't have all of that. And I may Mm -hmm. not have it till the week of. So I gave them enough so that they could hold the space and, you know, call in people. But I had to really trust myself so that people would trust me in the process. Like I was already showing up as the leader, like, I know I got this because this desire would not be in my heart if it wasn't supposed to be blooming this way. And literally two days before the retreat, I had a conversation with the retreat leader and we added a portion that was like the complete perfect integration experience. And before it had been like, nope, it's too late. We can't shift this around. We can't. (laughs) Right. Your head would say, no, no, no. Uh-huh. And and then what will people think? Because it was it was um, on the scale of woo. It was way over here. <laughs> no, we're nice. doing this, and it was the most <laughs> impactful. And it made this complete safety bow on what we were doing. Yeah, and it and it just it was so easy. I love and it. And there was so much transformation. And mm. I all I had to do was say yes to that energy and trusting and making room for the magic and being okay in that, not being rushed, not being, I got to have this answer, being willing to go with the change as it, as it presented. Mm -hmm. And it was magical. And, you know, we heard like going from the HR manager with the rule book (laughs) and I got a title and I got a rule book and I can, and into, I'm, I don't know. Yes, I know. I hear you want the agenda, but it hasn't come through yet. Yeah. And to be okay with that and to receive whatever they might have about that. Mm -hmm. And when you're so confident, it just is. That's just what it is. And I also built in a lot of space. Like even on the agenda, there was little Mm -hmm. hints of things because I didn't know what was going to show up in the container. Mm. And I didn't want it. Which is brilliant. Right. For an expression magician, right? So for Wendy really like doubling down on her expression, Like that's it. It's going to change the way you work. Mm -hmm. It's going to change the way you structure your marketing. It's going to change the way you structure your business model, your calendar, you know, the conversations you have, the way you offer what you offer and how you deliver it. Like trusting your magic can Mm -hmm. alter all of that, making it all lighter and more fun. Yeah. And it was like, oh, we're doing this again. And I booked the next retreat for May on the spot. (laughs) Okay. Come on. Yeah. Right. Yes. Fun you can have. With your clothes, clothes on, on. <laughs> uh, Elizabeth. Yeah, I, I've real. It's really landed with me that my job is to make space to take care of my magic and to take care of mm. my energy. And that if I do that, if I just each day I'm waking up and doing the things that I know to do that take care of those things, anything I want is possible. 
And I just mm. need to keep stepping in because it helps me be clear about what action to take next helps me not mm -hmm. get stuck in the busy yeah. to do, you know, I'm a real checklist girl. I will check, do the to-do list all day long. But if I'm in my, my energy, my magic, I go, Oh wait, none of this needs to be done because the thing to do is this mm. other thing. Yeah. And awesome. so um, it, it definitely, it's like, Oh, I believe it. I step into it. And so much is possible from that. Um, I love it. My job is to create space for my magic. And like, I want everybody to really hear that. I, I resonate with that deeply, you know, and we think sometimes like working is just sitting at our computer going like this or whatever, but like your job is going for a, a walk in nature and hugging the trees. I know, I know you're a nature girl, right? And like, that is bringing your magic forward. And that is your job. Because that allows you to be your best when you're with your client. I feel like this is one I do with my clients every day because that's my job is to make your space align with your life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's so um, interesting for me when people are like, I don't know what makes me smile or I don't like to be at home. So for me, making space for my magic is really making places that feel um, mm -hmm. rejuvenating some feel lively and creative and so I create those zones so I physically walk through my day and walk through my energy pattern like that mm -hmm. um, and just the impact that has like I can't imagine a life that you don't create space for your magic like mm -hmm. literally and my mind figurative. yeah Right. Like you wake up and you have your morning miracle around, right? Like you, you know, where do I meditate? Where do I, you know, fill my cup? And then at lunch, I know I get kind of tired. So what's my, you know, what's my routine? That This is Doug's walking time. So he's not happy. He's like, hey, we're out nature at this time usually, right? Like there's those things you set in place. But when your cup is full, it's so much easier. And what I notice when my cup isn't full, how many regrettable moments I create. So if mm -hmm. I squash out the magic, I create so much work for myself. <laughs> with... oh, that's so good. Mm -hmm. I just love this, how you have naturally created spaces for magic. And then just to like tell on you a little bit. And then you're like, but I don't know how to offer this. And it's like, but you do it so naturally. Like you've built spaces for magic for yourself and your clients for so long. And I love just so much that you're, you are in such alignment with that and such mm -hmm. ownership of that. <sighs> Amazing. Sandra. I wanted to actually speak to like a make, um, making space for your magic, like in your coaching container. This is something that's really up for, it's always been up for me, but it's really up for me in the past few days so that, um, you know, whatever I've planned, you know, or whatever you, you know, your curriculum or, you know, whatever you've got on the agenda for that day you know, what, what I have learned is that that might just go all out the window, right? Uh -huh. Because your recognition magic has come on board and you're seeing a pattern. Like for me, I'm hearing line, if I'm hearing someone, all of a sudden they're speaking words that are not aligned with what they're trying, what they're saying, if that makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. I'm going to stop or in your words, like if something comes up and it's like, we have to go there now, right? Because something is up and we're going to go there. So that's, that's one one thing that's just come up for me, um, I mean, even like yes, yesterday on Valentine's Day, I um, it was Valentine's Day. I did a heart meditation with my group. We ended up in a whole discussion of self love. I found myself like, oh, something was coming through. I don't even know what I said, right? Like people who have expression yeah. magic understand. I talked for about ten minutes. I could hear a little voice saying, "Honey, you didn't plan for this. You had this uh, other things you want to do Honey. over here." <laughs> And then I'm like, okay, I hear you. We're going to get to those. And I'm just going to trust that, that this is what my people need to hear right now. Mm -hmm. The source has given yeah. me this and I'm just going to get out of yeah. the way. So good. Yeah. Who relates to that? Like your magic is leading you one way and then your plan was something else and your fight having it. Your, your voice is very sweet that it says, honey, but uh, like, that's what I thought. <laughs> like, you're fighting with yourself in your head. Like, do I trust this? Do I like that still happens? Totally. Oh, source says teach this in segment one, but I, my brain says that's not a good idea. For me, what's present with that last paradigm is just giving yourself the space and the support to grow this, this skill of like going first, trusting your intuition, trusting the feeling, trusting your magic, 
because having the support to embody this new way of life is what will change mm. your business and like really everything. So Receiving yeah, get in, people. get in the room, get in the room with the magic. <laughs> mm, get in room with the magic. Yeah. Yeah. I like that Thanks, too. Sarah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Can we give them a hand if you've yeah. taken some value from like the practical application? Okay. Yeah. Thank good. you. Good, good, Thank good. you. Okay. Well, unpin. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you for your generosity and who you are. And like, so I've been really feeling teary at like mm-hmm. who, who they are. <laughs> like pretty brilliant. It doing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 